Thank you. Merhaba arkadaşlar, hepiniz IFT Talks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün İsveç'in en iyi üniversitelerinden Yönçepin Üniversitesi'de eğitim almanın ayrıcalıklarını Jessie'den dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı sağ alt köşede questions bölümünden yönlendirmeyi unutmayın. Yes, Jessie, the stage is yours now. Thank you very much, Zeynep. Um, so hi everyone, um, my name is Jasim Sheikh. Um, even though I cannot see you guys, which is a little bit frustrating. And that is why I don't like the digital platform so much. But I'm happy that at least we have this uh, uh, possibility to somehow speak with, the, uh, with each other uh, during these times, you know. So um, as you can see, I'm not a blonde, so I'm not Swedish Swedish, even though I'm representing a Swedish university. So I was once upon a time like a student like yourself uh, who was thinking of uh, his higher education. And I remember when I was, you know, going to select my education, I told my father that I'm going to come back in two years of time after I finish my master's education. So my father sometimes call, calls me up and says, hey, by the way, by the way, when, when do you think your two years are finishing off? Because it's long two years since I came to this country in 2005 and it's already 2022. So you can imagine how long I stayed in this country. Um, so this is uh, also uh, maybe uh, uh, an indication for you guys to think about that this country has so much to offer uh, in terms of work, in terms of quality of life, in terms of uh, rules and regulations, in ter terms of sustainability, environment, that you kind of tend to stay back in the country and, uh, you know, try to find a life here because you, you know, when you compare it to maybe where you come from, Maybe you find the benefits and you can see that you can learn more uh, in, in this leading society. So my presentation today is also going to be focused around that how and why should you make your decision for higher education? Because if you think about it, um, buying um, some kind of a tangible product, like for example, if you go out in the market to buy an iPhone or a mobile phone or whatever, you can see things, you can touch it, you can feel it, and then you exactly know what you're buying, right? Uh, so you might, you you have a choice to buy something for $5,000, $2,000, $3,000, but then exactly in front of you, you exactly know that, you know, the quality of this is super high, that is why I might have to pay $5,000 on this. But education is, um, intangible you can't touch it you can't feel it and when you speak with a lot of people around the around uh you know who are who are representing universities everyone is going to say we are the best we do this great so how do you judge which education would be the best for you so my my purpose for this presentation is to somehow give you this kind of information that can connect you to make a better choice that why, if I'm going to spend this amount of money, why it makes sense? Um, and why should I select this country? Why should I select this city? Why should I select this university? You know, et cetera. So, so let's, let's begin with the presentation and then you guys are going to learn all about it. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, just bear with me for a few seconds. So, yeah, you guys can see my screen, uh, right, Zainab? Yes, we can see it. Perfect. So you can see the first slide. It's about Create Your Own Tomorrow. Um, in fact, uh, Zainab, can we run the, the, the video, the YouTube video first? Yes. Yeah.
Just can you unmute yourself? Hello. We can hear you. Okay, super. Um, let's see. Great. So I hope you liked the video which you saw, and it's about creating your own tomorrow. Uh, the the the idea is that we believe that. Uh, you know, as a university, we should be helping to, you know, make sure that you kind of build your future when you begin your education with us. And that is why we can, you know, we would like to make sure that the, the amount of energy, money, your time, your investment you put into your, your choices to, to study with us should be worth it. Um, and I, I'm going to explain it, it with a lot of different examples. So you can see that how can you do that? How can you create your own tomorrow? First, first, first, the first thing we should talk about the country first. Um, and uh, many of you might relate Sweden as a country which is maybe perhaps a cold country. Yes, that's true. But it's also quite a beautiful nature. It has scenic views. It has uh, lakes. It has a lot of forests. Uh, you can hike you can you know you can do a lot of different kind of activities uh, so even though i come from a very whole hot climate weather country but yet i can feel that if i have survived in this country anyone can survive and i'm going to sh later on show you how where our city in sweden is so you will see that we are pretty down in the south so it's not as uh, you know extreme weather as you would find it in up north of the country so these are some of the pictures you might be able to uh, relate uh, with Sweden. For example, IKEA, it's a Swedish company. You see Volvo car, that's a Swedish you know, brand. Um, and then you see a, a picture of a Goller dinner, which is uh, hosted for the uh, Nobel Peace Prize uh, ceremony. So that's also the, um, you know, it's a Swedish tradition, Swedish thing. Um, and then we, you can see fashion, you can see, you know, some other pictures. So the, these are, you know, um, some things which you can um, easily relate Sweden with. And there, there are some innovations in it. So we are going to talk about those innovations just in a little while. So we have some of these uh, big names, which are part of our, uh, you know, economy, and uh, not just our economy, but they are also helping uh, build economies around the world because they have offices in different parts of the the countries, uh, different countries around the world. So you can, and perhaps you can see and relate to these brands. For example, Atlas Copco, IKEA, <clears throat> Spotify, H and M, AstraZeneca. Um, you know, all of these brands you might be able, you might be seeing in your country. So, and what happens as a, um, quite common, I would say it is, that usually when, you know, international students come down here to study their education, I have seen this as a common behavior that the firms, the Swedish firms, which are working in your home countries might be quite keen on, you know, employing you to work for them. Why? Because they understand that you have taken your education from Sweden and you understand the Swedish mindset and you understand the Swedish culture. And, and hence, it would be quite easy for them to get you in uh, to their workforce because you understand the mindset they, they operate with, right? So it's quite common to see that a lot of people who uh, study with us, um, they end up working with these companies, even if they go back home. 
So um, I would talk about some of the factors which I think really make uh, Sweden as a great choice. And one of the major factors I'm going to talk about is sustainability. Um, and you know, this is a war buzz which is in the world right now, and we everyone is talking about creating sustainability, environmental sustainability. Uh, we need to you know control our uh, impact of carbon emissions. So. Uh, if we are not going to um, be responsible uh, from the time being where we are taking our education to be able to understand that how can you embed this concept once you are going to start working in corporations or if you even if you are going to build your own business. So, so this is really important factor. And, and also the other factor which I think is also towards the health part. I mean, you need to also be able to understand that if you go to a, to some country for your higher education, so the environment, the the rules and regulations are going to give you the most healthy output. So, if you look at Sweden, for example, the um, the half of the uh, I would say um, the you know Sweden is a very cold country. So, half of the energy consumed for heating, for example, is uh, uh, coming through the um, sustainable resources. And uh, um, the, I mean, even at the district level, for example, what happens is that we might be, you know, we might have a lot of wastage from the industries, for example, uh, like, uh, you know, residue from um, logging industry or some other industry. So what happens is that wastage of those industries is not really wasted. So that is used to convert it into energy and that could be used to pour for heating or some other purposes. And, uh, um, and that is why you see Sweden quite far ahead in, in you know, sustainability when it comes to sustainability. And it was, I think, um, the, the, for the first time, it was a Swedish scientist um, who came up with the concept in 1800s uh, that, you know, the impact of greenhouse gases would be on the climate. So, I mean, the, the, the far reach view of Swedish, um, you know, engineering and, and mindset was quite far ahead in its time because they, could, they, they were already able to see beyond time that the greenhouse emissions could have a great impact on the climate. So, uh, you know, so, so this, this nation has a very close connection with, with nature, basically. Innovation. Um, so remember, I spoke, we saw some of the pictures. Um, and one of the pictures we saw before was also the pacemaker. Uh, pacemaker is something that is, uh, you know, once your heart fails, you, kind of need, you need a device to make sure that the, you know, uh, blood is pumping um in you know from your heart into your other veins of your body so that's that's when you use pacemaker and uh, ultrasound when your you know um when your kidneys have failed then you need an ultrasound uh sorry not not kidneys i'm sorry uh, when you know when you are pregnant for example or you need to check something else uh, you need to measure the health of the fetus, you can use ultrasound. That's also Swedish innovation. The dialysis machine, for example, is when your kidneys fail, and then you can use uh, the dialysis uh, machine to, uh, you know, pump, infuse new blood into, into your body. The zipper, the ball bearing, the color screen, the safety match, all of these are uh, Swedish innovations. And uh, I usually tell my uh, students that, Think about it. That if we have, uh, uh, you know, if let's say if we have all of these innovations, and if you look at the uh, Google, um, you know, and the index of innovation, you will find that Sweden is usually ranked in top three or top five countries in the world, and this ranking is, is always there. Like if you if you check it for the last five years, I'm sure you're going to find Sweden in top three or top five countries. And why uh, is that? Because if you, for example, have innovation in your hand right now, uh, so for innovation to come into life, you need to have a very strong uh, infrastructure for R&D. And for R&D to happen, you need to have a very strong infrastructure for higher education. So for higher education infrastructure to survive and thrive, 
you need to have a very strong structure connecting to your bachelor's and to your high school. So if, if you don't connect all these dots together for the education, you can't really produce innovation in the end. So you need to, you know, this is a mindset. This is a training which builds up from your younger child, you know, hood training to your high school training through your uh, university training and to your higher, higher, you know, education training that, that, that fosters this kind of mindset to inspire you to, you know, think about creating innovations. And universities in Sweden, I would say, are far uh, ahead in this concept because they really promote research. They really promote research and development. They closely work with different industries uh, and society to make sure that they are solving problems. So, and then the other factor is equality, which is also, I think, um, an important factor to discuss. Why? Because um, I I know that uh, you know in many societies we are we are still struggling with the equal rights of men and women, for example, um, and we are also struggling with equal rights to other kind of you know communities um, in in the um, in in in our societies. So. So, but when it comes to Sweden, for example, um, you know, they have this uh, fundamental rules where they respect religion, race, um, or, um, you know, whatever country you belong to, whatever, uh, you know, ethnicity you have, um, you, you are also treated equally, even if you're a woman or a man. And then it's a very safe country. So if uh, even if as a as a woman, for example, if you're going late out, you could be uh, you know you are very well um, you you feel secure uh, because you know that uh, you know the the society has all the right um, building blocks to be able to protect you and also to help you and etc. So so that's quite quite a very very strong factor in in the society. We spoke, we, you know, remember, I think uh, on the innovation uh, pay, uh, slide, I showed you some innovations and then you might have seen Dynamite, for example. Dynamite was, you know, uh, no, Alfred Nobel was the creator for Dynamite and, you know, and after whose name the Nobel Prize, by, Prize is held up anyways. So he, you know, so it's a Swedish, uh, um, a ceremony and uh, um, we are proud for, for um, of that. So yeah, uh, this is the map of Sweden. It's a pretty long map, um, but up is north, down below is south where you see Malmo and Jönköping is pretty down in the south, as you can see. And if you look at the strategic location of Jönköping, you will see that it is connecting to, uh, it connects with Stockholm, uh, which is the capital of um, Sweden. And then if you go further up from Gothenburg, you will, you will, you know, enter Oslo, uh, which is the capital of uh, Norway. And if you go further down below from Malmo, you reach Copenhagen. So, and if you calculate the distance from Jönköping to Stockholm or Jönköping to Oslo, Jönköping to Copenhagen, which are three different capitals, of uh, Scandinavia. So you'll see that Jönköping is quite in the center and almost connects these three different capitals on almost equal distances. And that is why you see uh, there is a lot of logistical hub around this region. Um, and we are also teaching uh, education around logistics, um, both on the engineering level and also on the business level. So um, enough about Sweden, I guess. Uh, we can now talk about Jönköping. Um, and, um, you know, it's a beautiful city, uh, no doubt about it, because it has uh, beautiful lakes. And I, lo I know that Turkish people love water. Um, and, uh, um, you know, so you wouldn't miss water. You wouldn't miss lakes. You wouldn't, uh, you know, and, and during summertime, you can even swim in the sandy beach we have in the city. Um, and then, you know, we also have the same kind of uh, facilities as you can find in any modern city or any big city in, in, in the world. We have, uh, you know, uh, theater centers, we have culture house, we have uh, 
uh, sports arenas, uh, everything. And uh, uh, we have approximately about uh, 11, uh, I think 12,000 students, um, and which is close to 10% of the population is, uh, I would say, um, you know, students. We have 130,000 inhabitants in total living in, in, in around the city. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, CNN have rated our city to be top 10 healthy cities in the world. We have uh, four different schools. Uh, we have a school of business, we have school of engineering, school of education and communication, and we have school of health and welfare. And if you look at uh, the, um, the picture behind, it's a real picture. And you can see the round white building with uh, the yellow, um, you know, connecting buildings. Uh, so if you look closely from the aerial view, you will see that this looks like a key and this is key to knowledge basically. And I usually tell people that think about it, if uh, we were so keen on making sure that how should our design look like, imagine how keen would we be to make sure that the quality of our education should also be to a, a great, great level. So this also goes on to show that, you know, our focus is not just to, um, you know, giving you ordinary education, but to make sure that we are key to knowledge for you that is a future knowledge. And we build and educate people for tomorrow, not for today, for tomorrow. So some interesting facts, more facts. We are rated number one in entrepreneurship research in Europe. 14% um, of our students start their own business, which is quite good. We promote entrepreneurship quite strongly. We have 1,000 research and partner institutions. Uh, we, you know, we spoke about sustainability, but we can also say a few things here. Uh, for example, we have an active student association for sustainable action. We, um, JU Sustainability Network arranges our yearly sustainable festival with uh, an innovation race competition for students. Uh, JU stri strives to ensure equal opportunities and greater equality in both education and research. Uh, and uh, sustainability is basically embedded in our educational programs and research. Uh, we are top five in the world for quality of education. Um, we, you know, we have JIPS Entrepreneurship Challenge is, uh, you know, uh, a case competition held at the business school uh, every year. And we have been, you know, doing these kind of case competitions quite, quite, quite a few now. And, uh, we have, uh, you know, we our students participate every year in several world-class case competitions as well. And we can also talk about, uh, you know, um, we, as per Financial Times, we were ranked top 100 business schools in, in you know, Masters in Management in 2021. So that is, this is one of the key, um, I would say, achievements we have recently um, got. And we are very proud of that. And this also goes on to show that, you know, we work towards reaching the uh, highest quality possible. Um, and we still want to, you know, make sure that we keep improving uh, every day in, day out. And we are double accredited. We have both Equis and ACSP, which is also quite unique. And only 2% of the business schools around the world have that. Uh, we have 90% uh, of our students gain employment within two months after graduation, one of the highest rates in Sweden. Uh, we have 800 partner companies and 1,000 research institutions um, around the world. I think I have already spoken about this point, but uh, just to re-emphasize on that. Uh, re re we are ranked among top 25 universities in the world in student mobility. Our world-renowned research in aging makes a positive impact on society. We have world-leading re research in materials and manufacturing technology for casting. And the School of Engineering is a member of CDIO, a prestigious, prestigious collaboration between leading engineering schools globally, which was started by MIT. And this basically is given to schools whose engineering education is not just based on academics, but also quite strongly focused on uh, connecting with the society, connecting with the reality. Um, and that happens if you have real projects for companies, if you have real, you know, labs where you can practice stuff. 
um, if you have projects in your daily lives which are you know actually making sense to uh, you know which are connected with the the real projects of the ind industry basically we provide we believe in a lot of practical work experience um, we you know these are some of the examples which you can see uh, how our students could be you know working in the classrooms yeah this is also uh, a student from vietnam i guess and uh, he built this uh, model for windmill um, not just that they also visited the uh, they did a field visit to go to, uh, you know, uh, to see and, and see how windmills and these, uh, you know, energy systems operate. Uh, we, we also have a world, world solar challenge where we, um, you know, there's a competition that is held every year. Um, and it's a competition where universities, universities are invited to participate uh, for a race which is approximately more than 3,000 kilometers, and uh, um, and every university have to bring their own uh, solar panel driven car, and they have to compete in this race, and and you know the, the winner gets uh, appreciation and some other um, awards and stuff. So we are quite proud to say that we have been uh, participating in this kind of project, and this is a project which is a student run project, student led project. So if you become a student at our university, you could also think of participating into this project or becoming a part of this, this team. And it's, uh, you know, so you can, you can actually do that. Uh, these are some of the pictures. Um, and then we also have a science park, for example. Uh, we, um, you know, remember we mentioned about 40% of our students start their own business. So science park is um, a, a place where people can, you know, discuss their ideas, they can share their ideas, they can understand how the rules and regulations may apply towards those ideas. Uh, they can also understand if they want to go and, you know, pitch their ideas to venture capitalists or uh, build a business plan and apply for funding and, you know, they need to get an office, uh, um, all, all those sort, sort of things which need help. Uh, are provided by Science Park, and and those those services are free by Science Park, um, and we strongly uh, you know support Science Park, and uh, so so you you find this kind of culture that our students are quite easily connecting with Science Park, and you know holding their meetings and discussing their ideas and and finding the possibilities of of going further on with that. We have a lot of uh, international students. Um, I think we have more than 70 different nationalities which are being represented in our campus. Um, we have uh, 350 partner universities. We have 800 host companies in this industry. Uh, we have student union led exciting trips. Um, we take our students to a lot of different places. Um, you, these are kind of trips. And those trips are usually subsidized, even though you pay something for those trips. But uh, if you would want to do those trips on your own, they might be super costly. Uh, for example, we um, that one one trip goes in winters to look at the uh, you know the the Northern Lights, um, and um, so that you can imagine you have to go all the way towards north to to experience that. So you know so those kind of trips, exciting trips, are are part of uh, you know student union um, led projects. English is spoken by all, um, and when I say by all, literally by all. Quite uh, you wouldn't find uh, you wouldn't face any problem um, if you want to communicate with people in the society at the university. Um, anywhere around in Sweden, basically, so you can get around with your English language, and you can, you know, communicate. You can make your point understand, and you can also understand the others. We have uh, um, the different types of education. We offer bachelor's education, and we all offer master's education from four different schools. Um, and uh, so the business school offers economics, management, marketing management, sustainable enterprise development, new. Uh, and so these four are offered by the business school. Then we uh, have some of the offerings from the engineering school, which is new media design and, and industrial engineering and management, um, specialization in sustainable supply chain management. 
Then we have uh, offered by the health school, which is prosthetics and orthotics. And this education is about when you lose your limbs or uh, you know you need uh, bionic arms or bionic legs or you know those prosthetics. Um, so then that education is basically helping you to do that. We have master's education. We provide, uh, you know, um, we offer financial analysis, marketing management, um, engineering management, logistics and supply chain management, applied economics and data analysis. Um, we have digital business. We have global management. We have strategic entrepreneurship. Then we have, uh, um, you know, provided by our School of Learning and Communication, which is Interventions in Childhood, Sustainable Communication, Global Studies. Uh, for sustainable societies and social change, learning, digitalization, and sustainability, occupational therapy. Um, and then we have uh, um, engineering master programs to be offered, which is AI engineering, uh, sorry, materials and manufacturing, product design, user experience design, production engineering and management, su supply chain and operations management, sustainable building information management for civil engineers. Then we also have user experience design. And then um, we have uh, uh, pathway programs, um, which, uh, you know, um, yeah, this, this is about, um, how do you say? I mean, for example, um, you know, we require 6.5 hours for, uh, or 90 TOEFL, if you want to come and study with us. But let's say if you don't get 6.5 or 90 TOEFL, for example, and if you get five vials or 5.5 or six, then you can come and study a pathway education in English uh, to fulfill the criteria for our, um, you know, to begin your education with us, to begin your actual program you're interested in to study with us. So, so for example, if you come for, if you have five vials, you have to study for one year. Uh, if you get 5.5, then you have to study pathway either uh, year general uh, depends if you need extra courses in mathematics or something, or you can also study pathway semester English, and then you can also do pathway summer, which is um, um, just for four weeks if you already have six IELTS, for example. Uh, well, uh, the application and admissions, uh, it's pretty straightforward process. Uh, the first step is we check your eligibility, and uh, this is quite easy for you to do that. Um, if you go to the uh, program pages we have on our website, you can find uh, the, um, the criteria, the requirements, for example, uh, that what, what is required for you to really apply for this education. For example, you might have studied a certain um, you know, background education to be able to apply for, for that, that education. So you need to read that. Then it's very simple. You need to apply online um, and that you can do on our website, ju.sc. Um, and then you upload your documents. Uh, that's also pretty straightforward. And these are the documents which you need to upload, letter motivation. Uh, you can also apply for scholarship. You um, can have, uh, you know, you need to upload your certificates and diplomas, uh, proof of English, a copy of your passport, um, and, um, uh, you know, transcripts of completed courses and grades. Um, and then um, basically um, the last part to just to remember is that even if you're in the last final year of your high school, you can still apply for, uh, you know, through the local admission we have to become part of the, uh, you know, you can, you can be admitted provided you will have your diplomas and certificates when you're going to come and begin your education. But you could be given admission uh, already, uh, you could be conditionally admitted uh, if you are in the last semester and you are expected to finish before your education starts here. Finally, your uh, university students are recommended to apply through the local admission as well. Uh, so even if you're doing your bachelor's education and you are about to finish your, let's say you're in your last semester and you still haven't received your degree and you know you don't have the transcript from all your semesters, but you have transcript from all these seven semesters you have finished. So you can send in whatever you have finished uh, and even then you could be conditionally admitted um, so that's also quite quite a good, uh, you know, I would say, um, 
advantage for you guys if for those of you who still are waiting to finish their high school or or for for those of you who are still waiting to finish their uh, bachelor's education fee and scholarship uh, we um, it's about 10 to 15,000 euros per year the bachelor's education is about 10 to 15,000 masters is about 12 to 15,000 euros uh, pathway summer, pathway semester, pathway year English, and pathway year um, uh, general. All of these pathway based education are inclusive of your living cost and your tuition cost. When I say living cost, that includes your accommodation, your uh, two meals a day, and some books, and your bus card, and you know some other kind of extracurricular activities are part of this this fee. However, the bachelor's tuition and master's tuition is just the tuition for your education. It doesn't include your uh, living cost. Uh, so, um, and what we expect cost of living is approximately 860 euros per month, but this is the maximum which is uh, calculated by the um, you know, higher authority in Sweden. Um, I know I have a lot of my students who, who are easily living in 500, 600, 700 euros, depending on your lifestyle. For example, if you're cooking more at, at your, you know, your, where you live, then it could be quite uh, uh, economical. But if you are not cooking much at your place and cook, eating more outside, so obviously uh, it could be more costly, but it also depends if you choose where to live because we have uh, accommodations which range from maybe 300 euros to 700 euros. So you can either choose to live in a 700 euro accommodation or you can also choose to live in three to 400 euros accommodation. So that's your choice. At your service, we uh, provide guaranteed accommodation. We have free pickup service. We have introduction week. We, um, you know, we provide free health and accident insurance. We have Swedish courses. Uh, there is work permit. Uh, so as a student, you're allowed to work during your education. And then not just this, uh, Sweden have introduced new laws, which means that once you finish your education, you can stay back in the country for one year uh, to find work. Uh, and that's also quite, uh, um, I think, a great um, option for, for international students. Why? Because quite often I have experienced that many international students would like to take experience from uh, working in Sweden so that, you know, they, uh, they kind of get this experience and they can utilize this experience even if they have to go back to their home country. So this is th these are great offers, I would say. And then we have some videos to be shown, and I think uh, Zainab can help here um, to run maybe one more video, um, and then we can continue on. We are basically finishing off. I, what what I can do is let me finish off with with my presentation, and then we run the video in the end, and then we can take uh, uh, do Q and A se se session. Okay, yes. So uh, uh, lastly, I would like to say dream big and make it happen. Um, I, if you like or love football, I would say, then you would know who this guy is. Uh, this is Latan Ibrahimovic. He's a Swedish footballer. And, uh, you know, he has a saying, uh, you know, he has many sayings, but one of the sayings which I really like is, I do not need a trophy to tell myself that I'm the best. Uh, very, Zlat very Ibrahimovic type kind of a saying, I would say. So if you believe in yourself, I think you can really achieve the best um, and you can make it happen. Next step, uh, you just need to apply. Um, it's a pretty fast process. Pack your bags and come to this beautiful city, which you can see in front of you. And thank you very much for listening. And I can now ask Zainab to run one of the videos. And uh, um, yeah, so we can actually do that. I need to stop sharing. So. You can see my screen, right? Yeah, I think uh, I'm, I'm not so sure if the video which we ran for the first time ran properly, but uh, uh, maybe we can run that video as well.
the YouTube video. Uh, I can't hear anything. Uh, Zainab, I don't hear the voice. The sound is not not there. There is no sound. Now I can hear the song. Uh, Zainab, can we run the first YouTube video once again? Sure. Not this one, the other one. The, the YouTube link. You want the first one, Jason? Yeah, the first one, the YouTube one, exactly. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. So should I go to the chat function or the, um, to the, or to the uh, questions session? Please go to question section and you can start from the bottom and work your way up. Okay. Uh, what are the advantages of studying in Yun Shipping? Uh, I don't know, Ida, if you, um, uh, if you started late, but we dis did we did discuss about some of the benefits the city the city has to offer. For example, um, it's a very clean, healthy city. Um, even CNN has rated as top ten healthy cities in the world to live in, um, and it's a student centric city. It's quite easy to go around the city. Um, um, it's you know very much supportive for students. Um, yeah, and we have different. I think more than 70 different nationalities which are being presented on the campus. Um, these are some of the advantages I, I can think of. Uh, you know, it's pretty easy for you to come to the campus uh, no matter where, where you're living. Um, so that's that's quite quite a good, strong, I would say, uh, advantage for, for being in Yon Shipping. Uh, do, do we offer language programs? Um, no, not really, but uh, um, we don't do that. Uh, but you might, we might have some of the education which might be relevant to your profile, background profile. So for example, you could look into Leeds, uh, learning digitalization and sustainability. Uh, that could be, or some other education might be of interest for you. Can we apply to language program without applying a degree program? Um, 
I mean, if you mean language program uh, for the pathway education, yes, uh, that you can do without really applying for a degree program. That's true. And what is good about our language program is that uh, our pathway program, I would say, is that if you apply for that, then um, you once you finish that education based on that that certificate, you can use that to apply to any other Swedish university um, as well. So it's not just uh, applicable for our university, but it's also applicable for any other Swedish university. So that's quite, quite strong, quite good. Could you please let us know a little more about student life, Mr. J okay. Um, so yes, um, I mean, we have, uh, as I said, we have a student union, for example, uh, student union have uh, they host a lot of different kind of activities. Uh, I know that there are a lot of uh, activities which are also run through the uh, Young Shipping Student Association, which is a sports association, um, which what it does is that you can play, for example, um, you can go for playing badminton, you can play for volleyball, you can play floorball, uh, you can play football, you can, you know, you can can you, you can even go for canoeing in the lake during summertime. So there are a lot of different kinds of activities which you can plan to do that. And then we have quiz nights, we have quiz days, we have uh, uh, different kind of social um, activities happening. So there's, there's, there's a lot. Uh, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't really miss, um, I mean, you wouldn't get bored or you wouldn't really miss home so much because you'll find kind of home um, at university, I would say. Um, yeah, so I, I, yeah, this is, this is what, what, you know, student life, um, is basically. What about the IB credentials for studying at your university? Yes. Um, you could, uh, maybe the best could be that I can drop my email address and, uh, you can send me your, um, IB courses, which you have studied. And, um, then we can see basically. Uh, if you can apply to what could be the best uh, match education for you. And I'm going to let me go right now on chat to do that so that. I've left my, I'm oh, sorry, uh, I missed, uh, I'm, I'm writing it again. And I'm also dropping my mobile number. So this is for, um, you know, if you want to also connect to WhatsApp or something. So I would be happy to help out. Uh, now I'm going back to the questions. Let's see, where were we? Yes. What are the requirements for scholarship? Yes, um, well, you need to have, um, um, you know, your recommendation letters, your, motivation letter, your, um, you know, you need to have uh, so, so those kind of requirements. I can, I can basically um, drop a link, uh, which can easily help you to read about that. And you need to apply for the scholarships before 15th of April, if you want to do that. Um, and um, even though you could be admitted after 15th of April, but you cannot apply for scholarship after 15th of April. So maybe that is also a good link to share. Let me do that. Just one second. So I'm, I'm going to send you a direct link. Um, so going back to the chat and here you can find the link. And I think what is also good is to uh, maybe have this link where you find most of the uh, useful connections to what, what you might be looking for. 
Great. And coming back to the questions, um, are we able to work during our education? Yes, you're you're allowed to work, and there is no limit on the number of working hours. Um, not just that, um, you also um, can work after you finish your education. You can stay back in the country to find work, and let's say if you find work, uh, you can then convert your study residence permit into your work permit. And if you are able to do that, if you work in the country for four years, then you become a permanent resident in the country. And if you work for five years, you can apply for uh, you know citizenship of this country. Um, and I think it's uh, another great, exciting um, avenue you can explore if you are into you know, becoming multicultural or, uh, you know, if you are also thinking to maybe, you know, live a few years abroad to gain experience, for example. So, yeah, I think uh, so far this was the last question, as I can see, um, right? All right, it looks like you covered all of the questions, Yasim. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, okay. thank you very much for the great presentation once again. It was uh, very informative for the attendees and you covered all of the questions. Thank you for your answers too. Um, uh, thank you so much, uh, Zena, for hosting this and thank you everyone who have joined in today. Um, I really hope that you liked what, we, uh, what I said. Um, and if you are still confused or have more questions, you have my details, uh, please get in touch with, with me and I would be more than happy to help out. And, uh, um, and I'm also coming to Turkey, by the way, um, in April to attend the IEFT fair. So if you guys want to see me physically uh, shake hands, I would be more than happy to do that. Um, and uh, I can see you in Istanbul or Ankara or Izmir. Uh, please follow the, the schedule of IEFT and uh, you should be able to find me there too. Thank you very much. All the best. Yes. Also, I would like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. Katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz. Arkadaşlarım arasında için de faydalı bir webinar olmuştur. Yönçipin University ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için chat kısmında paylaşılmış olan mail adresinden Jasmine'e ulaşabilirsiniz. Ee, bir sonraki webinarlarımızda ve fuarlarımızda görüşmek üzere. Thank you very much again Jasmine. It was yeah, a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. Thank we are you. also excited to see you in our fairs. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.